this city and strive to the open air. Yeah, the countryside is so pretty with the wind blowing in your hair. We can look back someday. Gonna wrap up all the important stuff in this fiberglass blanket that way slag doesn't hit it and melt anything. You don't want to pop a water line. Yeah, that wouldn't be good. What's up, guys? It is freaking hot out today, but we are slowly approaching tornado season and we never finished welding the containers to the foundation. So I got my buddy Dylan out here. I've known him since high school. He is a freaking awesome welder and he's gonna get it all finished up for us because I can't stick well for shit. <laughs> Oh. Lines are often purged. Just using the torch to be able to burn off all the rust and the excess paint that was left over. Between the 16, 11. Okay, so on this weld right here, I use the 7018. It's uh, a rod that you just drag. You don't really whip it, manipulate it at all. You just crank the heat up and run with it. It's a low hydrogen rod, so that means like once it's exposed to the air, you need to get it in the oven or else the water's getting into the rod. It's no good anymore. So if you can see, the 7018 is a lot smoother. And there's a 6011 over here. Which is 6011, it looks a lot rougher. You can see like the whipples in it from having to whip it back and forth. But what that rod is good at is, uh, see how rusty this is? It'll eat through that rust. You won't have to worry about the contamination that you would with the 7018. 
Like if I tried to weld this with the 7018 without making it super shiny, it would just ball up and it wouldn't eat into the surface. You wouldn't get a good penetrated weld. So that's the difference between the 6011 rod and the 7018 low hydrogen rod. So we'll have two posts and the ground right here and they'll be facing uh, north and south. So that pole will be north, this one will be south. Um, and it'll basically be a giant teeter-totter. So we'll have the panels laid out on this and then we'll be able to teeter it from facing east to facing west. So we're always getting the optimal angle uh, for charging. And then I'm gonna put a couple fold down brackets right here on each side. That way we can just leave it at the normal, I guess, flat flat angle uh, in case there's any storms or we need to work on it, adjust the angles, anything like that. Um, and then in the center post right here, I'm also going to drill out a couple holes. That way we can have a quick release pin to be able to hold it in place whenever we tilt it. And then for the back side, we'll just have some adjustable uh, brackets right here. So you'll see whenever we get it put together, but it's going to be split in half. So one set of solar panels will be on a frame here. One set will be on a frame here. So whenever we put it out flat, we'll be able to tilt up those panels to change the angle um, with these brackets right here. Kind of confusing with it being a drawing and everything and trying to explain all that, but you'll see when it's done. I am not an artist, so excuse my crude drawings, but I figured out my plan for the solar panel mount today. So we're about to go to Lowe's and Walmart and get some groceries and supplies for the solar panel mount. So it's gonna be a little bit bigger process. It's gonna take us two days because we have to do a little bit of concrete, um, but it'll be a full tilt mount and then we'll be able to adjust it for winter versus summer angles too. Uh, so yeah, it's basically gonna be like a giant teeter-totter. Um, we'll see if it works. What up party people? We got our 12th panel in the mail, our brackets in the mail, we got concrete, we got more two by fours, we got it all. So, we are going to build a sturdier, more heavy duty mount. We're gonna cement that baby in the ground. So, let's get to it.
morning guys good morning last night it got really dark and i wanted to be able to give y'all a better quality video than just try to push out concrete right at night so yeah we decided to just go ahead and cut it off there and pour concrete this morning so that's what we're out here doing we were raised to know that the sun rises in the east and sets in the west and while that is true it's not exactly east and exactly west so due to the curvature of the earth, the sun actually rises a little bit northeast and then it sets a little bit northwest. So what we did was last night, we laid out a two by four in the direction that the sun sets. And then this morning I laid out another one in the direction that the sun rised at. So you can see from here, the two different angles with the two by fours actually kind of show you the curvature of the earth. We don't want our panels facing directly magnetic south. We want them facing solar south, where they're gonna get the most amount of solar at solar noon. So we're basically taking these two angles and we're gonna split them in half to be able to uh, position ourselves at solar south. So we dug our hole down to about two feet. The frost level here is about 18 inches, so that gets us a little bit below the frost level. Um, but at the end of the day, it's just for solar panels. So it's not like uh, we super have to worry about the structure of like supporting a deck or anything like that. After getting the hole down, dug down to two feet, we took our tamp and leveled the ground and compressed it. And then we put about six to eight inches of gravel on top and did the same thing. Took the tamp and then tamped it to be able to compress it and level it out. Um, after that, we checked the uh, level of the gravel with the level and made sure it was all straight. And we put our tube in the ground and then made sure it was lined up the way that we wanted it. So now we're ready to start pouring concrete. And then we had some leftover rebar from the house foundation, so we're gonna go ahead and put some rebar down at the bottom of it. Now that we have some concrete in the sauna tube, we're gonna backfill around the bottom of the sauna tube to make sure it stays in place. And 
And then the last thing we're gonna do is place our post in the concrete. It's not the best idea to put the post directly in the concrete because we know the post will rot over time. However, I wanted it to be able to be stronger, uh, being able to hold weight from left to right, being that typically when you set a post on top of concrete, you're only worried about the weight going down. You're not worried about side to side weight. So uh, this will be something that we probably will have to replace in 10 or 20 years if the post ends up rotting out. But for now, I think this will be a stronger way to be able to do it. Summer to the rescue. Now I gotta deal with all this and it's freaking hot. Well, we don't wanna backfill too much until after the concrete sets because we wanna make sure that we're able to compress the ground with a tamp. So that way we can prevent settling and running the risk of the pier itself actually moving in the ground. Now I'm taking these two by fours and lining it up with the post. That way we can make sure the post is square with where we're gonna have the second post at. basically like a waiting game because the concrete has to settle before we can do anything so yeah i looked at the package it said for post wait 24 hours before you put any kind of weight on it so, so we were hoping to be able to start putting it together tonight but it looks like we're gonna have to wait till tomorrow yeah so this is where we're gonna end it i'm sorry to make it two parts but we were already getting into a super long video so i want to make sure that i'm not rushing it and dedicating time to this because it's really important and Solar power is really important in making sure that we have a good stable base so our panels, you know, don't get destroyed um, is really important. But time to answer some questions, so let me grab my phone. So Walter Wright said, how did your property and pond hold up to all that rain we just got? Um, surprisingly really well. We wish we would have gotten more rain in the pond, but it did spark some ideas. So I think we're going to be running some like drainage from the roof to the ponds so we can be collecting the rainwater from our roof um, into the pond. But other than that, we haven't really had any flooding issues. Um, the lagoon's holding up nicely. We really didn't have any flooding in the creek. Uh, so Yeah, I think most of it just kind of was a little bit south of us, so it mostly mm -hmm. missed us. But I know a couple towns over they got, well, just the other day, they got like six inches of rain almost. So yeah. I wish we would have got that because our pond would be over full. Yeah. But Oh well. Millions of critters said, do you guys plan to have a veggie garden next year? And yes, I got started way late in the season. I just had like this urge to buy a whole bunch of plants and so I did. And now I have to learn how to keep them alive over the winter. So we're gonna do like a small little greenhouse setting and then, I don't know. He's the green thumb man, so I'm sure he'll come Not up Not really, with you this. are. You've been the one doing everything. But, well, yeah, but I cleared some extra land where the solar panels are gonna go behind the solar panels, I guess. Mm -hmm. So we'll end up putting a greenhouse over there because that's a good spot to be able to get sunlight through the majority of the day, um, which the plants need, so. Mm -hmm. So yes, we will. So Vicky said, are you worried the ducks will get harmed by the snakes that you keep seeing? <sighs> yes. I feel like I'm not going to sleep for a couple nights, but I trust in Cody to build me a badass coop. So, is that what it's called? Coop? Yeah, it's still a coop. Okay. Yeah, and the ducks won't just be like free roaming mm -hmm. at nighttime. It's the same thing as chickens. So we'll put them in their own little house basically, and they'll get locked up each night and then we'll have to let them out each morning. So just uh, for their own protection pretty much. Yeah. So. 
so we I want to build like a really good nice size area for them even though there's only two of them and then um, like a good nice size little pool and pond in there with some sort of water uh, yeah which so. they're getting most of their feathers now so mm -hmm. that'll probably be coming up here in a week I or want two. them out of my house they're yeah, so loud every morning 6 a.m. But yeah, I am concerned, but it's okay. I'll just like hover over them 24 seven and keep an eye out. Maybe I'll put a duck cam. Maybe we'll get a duck cam for out there. Yeah, so. that'd be cool. Yeah, but anyways, we will see y'all in a couple days. Bye. Bye.